Hello everyone, my name is Napoleon Kaufman. I'm the senior pastor here at the Well Christian Community. And I want to thank you for tuning in for Times of Refreshing. I want to revisit something that I talked about at the singles ministry that I think it'll be good I, not the whole thing but we're going to just get a little bit of this in and I think it'll be good for us how many hungry for the word of God this morning let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 we're going to look at verses 1 on down to 6 and the title of my message this morning is mind games mind games all of us have to keep in mind that we have an adversary. <clears throat> Satan himself desires to destroy our lives. And hit the primary place where he's going to attack us is in our mind. His desire is to get to our hearts. But he doesn't get to our hearts without first going through our minds. He doesn't have a foothold within our minds until we come into agreement with him. And so his desire is to pressure us with thoughts, pressure us with his desires, pressure us with suggestions, and then get us to agree with the suggestion so that it becomes a, a lie in our mind. And then eventually it becomes a fortified place. It becomes a stronghold within our mind. And then we begin to def defend the stronghold, the lie in our minds. And so now he gets us going in the wrong direction once he, he erects a strong hold in our minds around a lie. And so for all of us, we have to learn how. He's going to talk about this, about how to cast down strongholds and imaginations and arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have to realize that this is a part of our Christian walk. Um, and I was telling the singles the other day, one of the problems that we have as humans is that we are lazy with our minds. We have lazy minds. We're lazy in defending our minds. We allow stuff to come in, fester, take root and take hold, and then it makes it much harder to cast it down to get it out of our thought, thought system and thought patterns. And so we have to learn how to be quick to attack things that aren't lining up with the gnosis or the knowledge of God. We have to learn how to fight. And for so many people, they're passive with their mind. They give their mind to anything. And as a Christian living upon this planet, you can stop giving people and things and stuff access to your mind. Don't just read everything, even if Christian stuff. You know, I sit down with people, some people, Christian, well, I was reading this. I was, but listen, you better be careful what you're reading. Be careful with your mind. You don't protect that which God has given you as a precious commodity. The devil is constantly going to try to hit you. And we have to learn how to be in this world, not of this world. And we don't fight the same way the world fights. We fight with the tools that God gives us through his word. And the devil hates it. <clears throat> when you know how to fight him off, you know how to fight off the tactics and you understand his schemes and devices. Don't be ignorant of them. Don't be ignorant of the enemy's schemes and devices. <clears throat> and then let me say this. And don't assume that the devil is just some pushover. These demons are no joke. <clears throat> They'll have you doing things and destroy your life. You look up and you wonder what happened. Now you're in a, now the devil puts you in such a pit and you're trying to pull yourself out. But a lot of times it starts with just bad thinking. Bad thinking. Look what he says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. He says, now I, Paul, myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent, I am bold towards you. He says, but I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with the confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk 
according to the flesh. The Apostle Paul understood that he wasn't just a natural person and that his authority was not just natural, that he had been authorized by God, he had been commissioned by God, he had been empowered by God to preach his message and to, and to do what God had called him to do. And, and he understood this, that he wasn't just a fleshly person. And all of us in this room, if you are born again, you have to stop seeing yourself as just a normal person. You're not. We just talked about it. We just shouted about it. We just talked about what Jesus died to give you. You have become a child of God. And God has given you his nature. He's empowered you and he's infused within you his spirit. So that makes you different. Stop acting like you're just some normal human being. You're not. You have been born what? Again. You've been born again. And so you're different. And when Jesus Christ is coming back to the earth, he's not just coming back to the earth for everybody. He's not coming back for everybody. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for people that have embraced his nature and have, have his spirit. And so for us, we have to see that we're just not normal. And the Apostle Paul, when he's addressing the church here, he's making it clear to them. He says to them, he says in verse 2, But I beg that w- you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Although I'm a natural person, there's a natural aspect to who I am. He he understood this dynamic of the two worlds. And he makes it perfectly clear here. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We know how to fight on a different level, on a different plane. We know who our enemy is. Stop thinking that the person on your job, that's your enemy. The devil just using them to get on your last nerve. Amen. We got to st- we got to understand that we're fighting a spiritual battle here. And the devil uses people. We we get that. The devil uses people. We have to see that this battle is much deeper than just my friend don't like me anymore. Or they hate me. No, Jesus looked at the Pharisees and Sadducees. He knew that the devil was using them to try to destroy what he was trying to do and to destroy him. But he sat on the cross and said, "Father, forgive them." And so for us, we have to see this dynamic, but God wants us to to keep in mind that we do not war according to the flesh, meaning you're not going to get back at people by being hateful and resentful and harboring unforgiveness and being bitter towards people and, 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 and all those things that come with being carnal and natural. And that's how, that's how the world gets back at people. You win by forgiving you win, by, you win by being truthful. You win by telling people straight up. You win by doing that which is righteous in the sight of God and having righteous judgment. You don't win by, by lying on people and cheating and doing stuff. We win a certain way, and the devil hates it when you, when you forgive somebody. He doesn't like that. He knows, oh, man, they just disarmed me. Because the same spirit that's coming at them... I can't get them to use the same spirit against the person that's attacking them. He doesn't like that. And so for us, there's a different way in which we fight and we win. Can I have an amen? But look what he says in verse 4. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Somebody say strongholds. The strongholds, and he's going to tie this in the next verse to our minds. And I said it, there's a fortress erected around a lie that the devil gets in a person's mind and then now we unfortunately begin to defend the lie in our mind. We start justifying the, our, our thinking about this and that. And then we start fighting, instead of fighting for God, we start fighting against ourselves. And then we end up confirming what the devil was saying within our minds and we give it legal access and right to remain in our brains that's not how God wants us to 
to function. He doesn't want us to, to flow like that. He doesn't want us to live like that. He wants us to be free in our thinking. And ultimately, he wants his thoughts to become our thoughts. Can I have an amen? He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down stronghold. He says, casting down. Somebody say casting down. He says, casting down arguments. This, this Greek word also means imaginations. It also means reasonings. Casting down arguments, reasonings, imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. He says, casting down arguments. And this is what happens. We start reasoning and debating and, and then the devil, he gets us to fight against what God is saying. To fight against what God is saying. And I, and I like this. I, I read my Bible and I like to just let the word speak to me. Instead of talking to it. This is one of the major problems with people in Christianity. Is we will read our Bibles. And we're wanting it to say what we would like it to say. Instead of just letting it speak to us. I'm going to use this mic. And it may say, it may speak to us. And it, may be, and it may say something to us that's totally contrary to what we have thought. But you have to let it talk. Because ultimately, it's right and we're wrong. Can I have an amen? And it's not going to change. This book, this is one of the things that always blew me away when I would read this Bible, is that it, it's not going to change for me. Its view, you can go all over the Bible. Its view is not going to change for me. So I have to make a decision to yield to what it's saying to me and then let that be. When I talk to people, I say, well, I'll just, let's read this scripture. We're going to talk about this. Let's read this scripture and let's read the context of what's being said here and then let that, let that speak. Okay, that's what it said. Okay, that's it. And then surrender to that. But people say, yeah, but. I heard this person say that, and then I was looking over here, it said halfway that, and then it says this, and then there's a little bit of that, and then instead of us just saying, no, this is what it says, and then leave it. Let the Word of God have its place in our lives, amen? But we have arguments, we have reasonings, we, we try to reason with the Word of God, we try to reason with God, God's trying to sh give us his thought about something, then we try to reason with God on it. And then he says, and then I like this, imaginations. This word in the Greek is tied to the word imaginations, meaning the devil is going to shoot imagery within your brain. Our job is to cast it down instead of allowing it to become real to us. Well, I saw this, and I heard this, and I can just see. And, we're caught, and we get, the devil will project imagery in our mind. You're driving down the street, and the devil will shoot a thought in your brain. You're going to die in a car accident, right? Why are they going to come out? And, and what we have to do is learn to cast down imagery. Can I have an amen, y'all? Cast the stuff down. Rebuke it. Tell the devil you're lying. That's not going to happen. The devil's a lie. You're lying. That's not the truth. And learn how to fight back and don't just give in to whatever comes to your head. Can I have an amen, y'all? Because what I, and I, this is why I named it mind games. The devil plays mind games with you. He plays around with your head to see if he can get a foothold and get you to agree with him on something. You're just going to be broke for the rest of your life. He'll try to convince you of that. Or you, you, you're never going to get healed. Or you, 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 you're never going to do this and, and you'll never prosper. And see, you're just dumb. You're just dumb. You can't learn anything. He'll start trying to tell you stuff and we have to learn how to fight him back with the truth. Of what God says concerning our lives. But people are lazy. They quit. They quit and they just give in to the thoughts. Don't you know that's going to be your wife? She's going to be your wife. She's going to be your wife. He'll pressure a person in their mind that that's going to be your wife, although she married to somebody else, man.
and you sitting around waiting around while 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 waiting for somebody else's wife. Ladies, I'm talking to y'all too. I'm just waiting. That's going to be my husband. As soon as they break up, because I can see it in the spirit, they're going to break up. Isn't that devilish, y'all? Can I have an amen? Isn't that devilish? But people will sit around and inter- entertain the devil instead of rebuking the devil. And praying a blessing over their marriage, praying a blessing over their life, and praying that God would move in them and keep them. Can I have an amen? But that's what we do. That's what people do. It's the devil's, it's his, his, it's his, the way he operates. We have to see it and come out of agreement and cast down imagery, reasonings, arguments that exalt itself, their, themselves above the knowledge, the gnosis of God. And then bring every thought, somebody say every thought. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That you submit that to Christ. That you bring it to Christ. And you allow, you allow, our, you allow yourself to come out of agreement with the enemy. The devil will attack you in your mind. And we have to learn how to fight back. Can I have an amen? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I want to show you this because this is also important. He's going to generally talk about warfare, but we're going to highlight and tie this to the warfare that goes on in our minds. He says this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to read this down, 13 verses, then we're going to come back and break it down. He says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he complete competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. For if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. I love this. I love this. And when we look at it here in verse 1, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Somebody say grace. He says the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Grace, and I, I talk to you guys about this all the time. Grace is not a license to sin. It is the power and the ability to overcome sin. God was gracious that when we didn't have any power to overcome our sin, that he died for our sins, infused us with his nature, and then has empowered us to overcome sin from the inside out. He has strengthens us within. Greater is he that is in me. He, he sets up a stronghold of righteousness and truth within me, and he helps me to overcome sin and to, and to resist the devil that he might flee from me. So what happens is grace is the empowering influence that's necessary to overcome sin. It's not just necessary to receive forgiveness of sins, although it does forgive, helps to forgive us of our sins. 
or to receive forgiveness of sin, but it's an empowering agent. It empowers you. It ca- makes you strong on the inside, capable and able. That's what grace does. And so the Apostle Paul, he's telling Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. God has given you grace. He has given you an unmerited benefit. The benefit is you now have power to overcome your sin and you've received forgiveness of sin. And so I want to use that as a tool in my life. I want to use that in my mind. I want my mind to become strong, to become powerful, to become a fortified place for truth and righteousness. And that and so that the devil can't just play games in my head. Have me up at one, two or three o'clock in the morning thinking about stuff and tripping off stuff and and worrying about stuff. That my mind has been settled. There's the peace of God is guarding my 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 heart and my mind. He's given my mind a sense of peace. He's clothed me with the helmet of salvation. So I can rest at night. I know who I am in God. Well, what happens is God wants us to use the grace that he has and be strong in the grace. So many people are weak in their faith and weak in their thinking. And they let the devil push them around when God is telling us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There's grace for that, for your thinking. He has left us. Now watch this. Grace leaves us without excuse for victory. If you want to win, you can win. If you want to win, you can win. If you want to have a good day, you can have a good day. Can I have an amen? If you want to have a good life, you can have a good. What happens is God empowers us. And the circumstances don't determine that. It's, it's who, I, I, who I become on the inside that determines that. That God has done something in me that has made me different and he's empowered me within. Well, we have to get our minds on this fact that God's given me grace to be strong in him. And that means even in my thinking that I can be strong in my thought life. He says in verse 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I love this. And so one of the reasons, one of the ways in which we can grow in strength when it comes to our thinking is learning how to get with people who have overcome in their thinking. Get around people that you know that don't, you know, get around people that you know they don't have stinking thinking. That you watch them and they're consistent and they seem like they're, they're on. And then learn to tell, tell, tell stories about it. You know, I tell people all the time. I, was, I, I tweeted this a couple, couple weeks ago. You know, you want to get around some people that got a few scars. The lion with the most scars is the one that can tell you how to make it through adversity and come through on the other side. Can I have an amen, y'all? You want to get around some people that have been around the block a little bit in this thing and know how to overcome, and you've seen them overcome and know how to win in their mind, and you don't see them flipping out. You see them consistent. You want to sit down and talk with people that you know have had some adversity, but yet, man, they stay their mind. They got the mind of Christ. They got the mind of Christ. You see, man, they got the mind of Christ. You just see how God is just with them and how they're always focused and intent and intentional about what they're doing. They don't get caught up in all this mess. And you want to get around people like that and then ask Questions, those people, and I love this, he says, commit those things to faithful men who can go off and teach others also. If you win in your mind, start teaching somebody else how to win in their mind. Can I have an amen, y'all? Start, start, set, start sharing the secrets. Tell them. This is how you do it, man. You want to overcome lust? Let me tell you how to overcome lust. This is how you do it. You want to you get your mind set so you don't harbor, harbor unforgiveness and different things? Let me show you how to do this. 
This is how you do it. And since we have to be humble enough to, to tell people that, man, I'm not doing good at this right now. Can you help me? I see you're good. Show me how to do this. Well, what happens is people get lifted up with pride. And they don't want to just come out and say, hey, man, this right now, my thinking is off. Can you help me? Talk me through this. Talk me off the cliff. The person, now listen to this. The scripture says, the person who isolates himself seeks his own desire. When you start getting to the point where you don't want to tell nobody. And you sneak off and I don't want to tell anybody I'm struggling. And, and you sneak off and you get alone with your computer. Start fiddling around on there. You click. Click, and then next thing you know, your mind is in a different world. And then somebody comes in the door. Oh, oh, what you doing? What you looking at? Oh, I don't know nothing. God is a good God. Yes, He is. God. Can I preach it this morning, y'all? What you looking at? person who isolates himself seeks his own desire. We got to learn to get our minds out of the trash. Talk to people. I mean good people. I mean people that are faithful, you know, are consistent. And then learn how to overcome when it comes to these things so that, and I love the Apostle Paul, we want to be strong in the grace, but then our job is to share with other people how to come out of the bondage. And all these things... He says, all the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be, be able to teach others. He says, also, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must, you must, saints, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a son. You are a daughter. But you are a soldier, and there is a war that is going on in your mind, whether you like it or not. Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925 479 1414 or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area we would love for you to come by and visit us our service times are Sunday 10:30 a.m. we are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore California 94551 for direction to our church call us at 925-479-1414 until next time may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life and may his word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.